A From Dublin to Cleveland production. Hello and welcome to From Dublin to Cleveland. I am Logan Howard, and this is an episode that is going out, and it is pre-recorded because we have our lovely friend from Ireland, Brendan Thomas Merritt. How's it going, Brendan? I could lie and say Australia has been great, always great, but the jig is up. We're pre-recording this. I don't know how Australia is going to be. I'm sure it'll be fabulous. <laughs> what Things is- like you have been since you know we last spoke five minutes ago. Yeah, so you will you will see you will hear about this eventually, but uh, yeah, actually. not now. Um, so he's he's still sunburnt, still in his room as he was before. <laughs> <laughs> So give us give us your best uh, Australian accent, Brendan. See it. Let's let's hear it. Good night, mate. What a sailor! Oh my goodness! I see your father <laughs> flying the crows, scaring the crows. He'll fit right in, guys. He'll fit right in. <laughs> if you would like, I can tell everyone my flight itinerary just to kill time. <laughs> I mean, if you want, if you want to share it so that they can all find you, you're gonna have fans in the in the airport shaking your head. <laughs> Absolute <laughs> celebrity entourage. <laughs> it's like, oh my goodness, they knew his voice. <laughs> all right, guys, on Friday the thirteenth. Yes, I know it's like the you know, the cursed day. Hopefully, mm-hmm. that means that there will be fewer people on the plane so I can sleep or at least get some food because I am pre-ordering it. At 5.55 a.m., I'll be leaving Dublin. I will be on a plane for four hours, ten minutes, and then arriving in Athens, Greece. Uh, The layover is four hours, fifteen minutes, but I've already explored Athens and Greece anyhow, so I don't think I'll leave the airport this time. Um, Then from Athens to Singapore, (laughs) the flight will be eleven hours. Pray to Jesus that I cope. Um... Then there will be a layover in Singapore for two and a half hours. Again, I will not be leaving the airplane. (laughs) Of course I will. The airport. (laughs) It's like, I'm not going. I'm I'm sitting right here until it goes to where I want. (laughs) I misspoke. Then from Singapore to Melbourne, Australia, will be a seven hour and 20 minute long trip. Uh, I will absolutely be leaving the airport because the layover is 10 hours and 20 minutes. Then there will be a two-hour flight to Gold Coast, Australia, which will be like my first main stop, where I'll be taking part in a TSNL, the Supernatural Life Revival, um, which I spoke of back in May when I did them in Ireland and the UK. Um, So I'll spend the first week in Gold Coast, then the second week in the city of Kempsey, also in Australia. Then on Monday the 23rd, I will be driving back, probably renting a car, driving back and ditching at the airport on uh, Monday 23rd. And at 8, sorry, I should know what time it is before I go. 6 a.m. Gold Coast, Australia time. I will be flying to Sydney, Australia. That will take one hour, 25 minutes. There will be a layover of two hours, 50 minutes. Before my flight to Ho Chi Minh City in Vietnam. Americans, I'm sure they're still sore about it, so <laughs> I won't be wearing one of, you know, our From Dublin to Cleveland t shirts. I don't want to rub it in. Uh, that flight will take eight hours and 55 minutes. Jakers. Then there will be a layover of six hours and 40 minutes. I may possibly have itchy feet and go exploring. Then from Ho Chi Minh City in Vietnam, I will be going to the Charles de Gaulle Airport in Paris, France. That will take 12 hours and 55 minutes, however will I cope. Um, then there will be a layover of 5 hours and 40 minutes before my next flight, which is from Ori, Paris, also called Paris Orly, <laughs> for some reason. Um, so I'll be traveling from one airport to another by train. Maybe do a bit of sightseeing, but I don't even know if I have time, to be honest. Um, and then get a flight from Orly, Paris, to Dublin, which will take one hour and 55 minutes. And then I'll be arriving back in Ireland on Tuesday, 24th, at 
1.20 in the afternoon. So basically my flight there takes about one hour, sorry, one day, 17 hours and 25 minutes or some nonsense. And then on the way back, more nonsense. <laughs> but did it for Jesus. Did it for Jesus. Yeah. <laughs> I had to get my thing so, about for Vietnam to get in the visa. Yeah. So what is your what are you actually doing there? What is, what are you going to do? Driving out demons. <laughs> I'll be like, "Hello there. What's your name?" Jezebel. Okay, I'm pretty sure this girl's mother did not name her Jezebel. Up and out of this girl. <laughs> And just casting demons out of people, breaking trauma off people, seeing the, seeing the lost, saved, the bound freed, depopulating hell, populating heaven. It's probably the best. There you um, go. Yeah. Can get. <laughs> we have unfortunately lost all of the conservative people, conservative American uh, believers, because you can't get that demon. They don't exist anymore. Um, <laughs> oh, I met them. <laughs> I met yeah. several this week. <laughs> they, they are around. So, yeah, they, that is. Uh, but again, as it talks about prayer and supplication, that's how you get rid of them. And so it can be done. It can. It can. The most important thing is that. People get saved first and foremost. Amen. With sanctification. And um, yeah, I, I just say to them, tell me what you don't want to tell me. And then when they start exposing their trauma or their deepest points of shame or, 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 or pain, that's when the demons begin manifesting. But no, I have to say now, in, in, a, lot of people, a lot of people have been calling me on Zoom lately and uh, just driving dozens of demons out of them a night. It takes about three and a half hours to actually get the people fully clean because, I mean, demons have been following them home for, for decades. Yeah. Or even there at church, um, as in the car park, maybe three or four Sundays ago, and uh, there was a woman uh, kind of double bent over a poor excuse for a church flower bed. And so I like going, blah, blah, blah. and and there's like there's natural vomiting and there's demonic vomiting. So I kind of just got down beside her and I just said, "What's your name?" Bruh. And I said, "Okay, where do you come from?" The waters. And I said, "Okay, so Jesus threw you out of heaven on a lightning bolt and pew, you splashed into the sea, huh?" And I said, well, sorry, Vranya, you gotta leave this chick. She's a child of the Most High God. She loves her God. I hate the cheat of Jesus. I hate the cheat of Jesus. And I said, I know you do. But I said, demons far more powerful than you are gonna be here any second now. And when you get cast out of them, they're gonna be hunting you down because you failed your assignment. So you might want to get a head start, okay? Off you go. And next thing, she's still being totally free and healed and restored. It was just wonderful. So, yeah, I think... Uh, you can be as dubious as you like, as, as spiritually conservative as you like, um, as in denial as you like. But this move of God, it is coming. Because even the body of Christ has been sorely compromised in so many areas and levels in these days. Um, so, uh, and the world as a whole is just so say, rotten right now. It is on fire. Um, but it's going to be on fire for Jesus. But the cleanup sometimes looks messy before it looks good. Yeah. Uh, it's messy witness that's worth engaging in. Don't pray that Jesus sends you broken people if you have no intention of helping them. You know? Yep. yep. Yeah. Well, that was a long intro, but hopefully it was a good intro. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't even like our first segment. That was just... Hopefully you learned a lot. It was, it was a intro that became the first segment. Anyway, uh, we are back on to our... Let's kind of like a, a jump to nine minutes and 38 seconds yeah. of like the intro. Yeah. We were also... Uh, it was all... Yeah, We so if we ever put timestamps in it, yeah, the, the intro... Yeah. Just, whoop, whoop, <laughs> why did the intro so long? <laughs> but, I think he's judging me. 
<laughs> it is a tell-all special. So Brendan was telling all. <laughs> he was telling you his flight, and he was telling you what he was doing. So. Yeah, exactly. Time to the hour. Time to the minutes. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So for this section, this is going to be more relating to work. So, you know, we are both teachers and we've both done work in the public sphere. So it'll be all fun questions. Anyway, number one, um, if you had an office mascot for your work, what would it be? A chipmunk. A chipmunk. Because they're cute. And everybody at your work is cute? (laughs) No, but I want something cute to look at while I work. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> no offense to my colleagues who ever watched this okay um you always know if i mean what i say but once i release it the earth i ain't taking it back i mean <laughs> ours ours already has a night so i guess i can't really change that but oh, nice. i think if we had to pick a mascot for our um our podcast Mm. Some people might say it would be the Thor hammer, or some people mm-hmm. might say a mic or something like that. Um, I don't know. I feel like it could be just Donald Trump's face. <laughs> there you go. That could work. <laughs> I thought you'd squeak when I did that. Never mind. <laughs> Let's turn on the volume and go. <laughs> That's two euro I've ever spent. And Love let it. me be honest, um, Brendan is probably the most American Irish person I've ever met. <laughs> I haven't met any, met very many Irish people, but he is very American. Pro-America. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm like, you know, 15 euros short of just sticking up another flag behind me, you know? Yeah. Like, he's, he's, more Irishman. he's more American than some of the Americans that actually live here. So, you know, <laughs> And the flag, yeah, yeah, he's more American than them. <laughs> um, <laughs> <laughs> all right, so if we were um, a bunch of, so if our our if our podcast or our or just both of us um, were characters in a cartoon, what wacky adventures would we embark on during our days? If we had to like create a cartoon of us, can we ditch that being hypothetical and just give that a try? We should, yeah. <laughs> we are good at writing stories, so we could write some really well. Maybe right. for our 150th episode, yeah. we'll just like I don't know, make like you know an, an animated one. I'm just gonna I, make a note of that while, <laughs> while we're talking, because <laughs> uh, unlike you, I never actually listen back to these. I once they're recorded, I like genuinely don't listen back to them at all. Um, I keep meaning to, never do. So yeah, I think all these wonderful ideas we have that just totally get lost in the ether. <laughs> Ooh, I think my character would look like a bunny rabbit. And I think yours would look like, I don't know, a mole-faced dog. Maybe like a polar bear or something. And we just have the most wonderful adventures. But we'd have two arch nemeses, not dissimilar to Pinky and the Brain. What are they going to do tonight, Pinky? The same thing we do every night, Brain. Try and take over the world! I think... And they could be our sisters. No, I take that back. Um, They could look like Nancy Pelosi. On your end. And... I don't know. Maybe one of my really, really bad politicians as well. Eamon Ryan, the green agenda guy in Ireland. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, we just go around, like, you know, on our little beep, beep. Um, and it would just be, I'd be iconic. Yes. And we'd be around, you know, mountain sides, and there'd be lots of anachronistic uh, encounters we have of, like, you know, famous people, past and present, and they'd tell us how amazing we were, and we'd high-five them, and we'd just make people happy unintentionally stopping the end of the world in every episode. I I would be excited for the third season because then the third season we would uh we would start doing some of the weird stuff where you go into other like dimensions or whatever and then we could go into like your books and we could go into like the color the color like universe or whatever and just have like an adventure in the color universe which would be pretty wild. Um, oh yeah yeah yeah. yeah. 
that would be fun. And then your ghost, your ghosty unsaid book, we could go into all the different um, stuff, run into the characters, but run into Benjamin. (laughs) (laughs) That would be a lot of fun. Um, Yeah. (laughs) I don't know. I think it would be, I think for me on my end, I'm just thinking we'd just make cartoon versions of ourselves and we would just have these adventures of um, we'd have like, a, an episode of we'd have more spiritual one like Buffy the ba- Vampire Slayer just in cartoon kind of spiritual stuff most of the episodes would be us yeah. trying to solve spiritual yeah. mysteries um, and we could Same. have like why, like people who claim to have um, you know like Samson's hairbrush or something like that and we've got to go and find Samson's hairbrush <laughs> <laughs> it's like I can confirm this is his dandruff <laughs> <laughs> I had this fucking dandruff problem when you think about it. Yes. Um, um, but yes, that would be a lot of fun. <laughs> and then after you know that series finally gets cancelled because we've offended too many politicians and they've gotten us taken off cable TV, then we could like revamp and have like, you know, a superhero TV show, which would be slightly more serious, but still really, really great. Yes. And then we'd keep running into all these superheroes that would claim to be good, but they're all just politicians and they're terrible. Mm-hmm. That's it. <laughs> Fucking people. <laughs> Their name is spelled backwards. And we, would, we wouldn't know until, like, you know, they're wearing a name tag and then they, we see them standing in front of a mirror and we'd be like, oh my goodness, I know who that is now. And we'd have to, like, I don't know, drop them off in, like, a pyramid shaped glass prison in the Bermuda Triangle. Mm. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> all right describe a day at, for both of us if we swapped places like we both taught at the opposite place okay what you think what chaos do you think would ensue <laughs> um well i think you would be asked explain for me and you would not have a bold notion what was being asked of you whatsoever and then you would probably do what most TEFL teachers do at the start. I mean, like, you know, that is a wonderful question, student. You know, it just requires a very long explanation. And I don't want to confuse the others. So I'm going to talk to you individually after the break. Okay. Okay. And then you'd probably spend your 15 minute break Googling it. I um, actually did that the other day. <laughs> I'm not going to tell tell what actually what I actually did it for because then someone will listen to this and they'll know. What I did. <laughs> Is Jesus the Messiah? Yes. Oh, that's good to know. Okay. <laughs> Got it. You know what? Think of that episode of The Simpsons where Bart steals all the teachers' answer keys and then none of them know how to do the jobs. That yeah. is basically my profession. Yep. No answer key. No learning. Um, and yeah, Jeepers, if I were to be teaching your itsy bitsy tiny humans mathematics, um, I think I would probably do something really generic like, okay, here we have one pen and we have another pen and we have another pen and another Pen and another pen. Okay, how many pins is that? Teacher, we're supposed to be learning algebra. I said how many pins are there? And then there we go, five pins. And I say, you know what? You have done such a wonderful job. I don't think we need to look at any more mathematics today. Let's just play with Play-Doh and use our imaginations. And then they would learn nothing. And then they would all complain about that evil substitute Irish teacher. But because the question was that I would only be there for a day, you know, skin off my nose. That's a good thing. <laughs> um, yeah, I think, uh, I think, I think on my end, you might, what the chaos that could ensue is you might you might um, maybe verbally tear down a poor student. <laughs> I can just imagine. I can just imagine this kid just looking up in the like just some some kid just being distracted, and you'd be like, "Look at me! Look at me right now! I'm teaching." Smack! 
that was me the year I began teaching. Yeah. Now I am actually so beyond caring, it's not even funny. Now if you try to stay in the room, I, I, I like I don't even know your name. Yeah. I can't talk to you. Yeah, and me, I would just walk in and they'd ask me things and I'd just go I don't know. We'll figure it out. <laughs> We're learning together. Let's go. We're learning together. <laughs> Let's look at the answer key to get I'll project it on the screen. <laughs> I don't know what, what English is. I don't know how to speak. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. What English is, you don't know until you actually study it. Yeah. Um, like I remember the day of my interview for this job, I was asked, and this was several years ago, I was asked if a pre-intermediate, didn't know what that was, if a pre-intermediate student asked you, Brendan, to describe the zero conditional, first conditional, second conditional, what would you tell them? My exact answer, and I quote, was, I would not explain them. I would give them a reasoning activity, which included the language point. And then I would give them a listening activity so that they could further get used to the language point. And then I would go to the board and I would write on the board zero conditional and the formula. And I would write examples of the formula in the positive. And I would write examples of the formula in the negative. I would then give them an example of the formula for a yes, no question. And then I would give examples on the board of questions for detail using the formula. And I said that for literally zero conditional, first condition and second, it took me 15 minutes to get it out of my mouth. Never said what the formula was. <laughs> I just kept repeating the formula. And at the end, the interviewer was like, you really fluffed your way through that one. But they were so short-staffed that I got the job. <laughs> as, as I still didn't know what those conditionals were over the first four years of teaching. <laughs> as, the, as, the going, as, the, as the thing says, if you can't describe a dog, you tie that dog to a tree, and then you describe the tree. <laughs> tree. <laughs> Using the formula. Oh, yeah, obviously. <laughs> All right. Uh, next one. Describe the funniest email mishap or autocorrect fail that you've witnessed at your workplace. Um, at work, no, nothing really funny. But when I was applying um, for the course to get on to get this kind of teaching job, um, I saw that the name of the person running the course was Morgan. So, I don't condone witchcraft, people. That was a long time ago. Don't come bite me. But in the 1990s and early noughties, Sabrina, the teenage witch, was on TV five days a week. Okay? Not the Netflix one with the kooky spooky mm. ultra Satan statues and all that crack. Just the, the original with Melissa Hastings or Harshing, whatever her name is. Harsh. So, um, I... Or is that the fat woman? Whatever her name was. She was blonde. Uh, so she had a couple of seasons living at home with her aunts and then she went to college and her high school was called Morgan. So I said, okay, Morgan's a woman. So I thought it was a little bit cheeky to just reply to someone I'd never met before as, you know, Miss Cox, because the surname was C-U-X. Uh, or like I'd be cheeky to say Morgan to talk directly. Yeah. So I sent the email back to Miss Cox. Um, and then I got an email back like two seconds later saying, hi, Brendan, just so you don't get the shock of your life when we meet, I'm a man. <laughs> and I cringed. <laughs> and then the very next thing I thought of was Morgan Freeman. <laughs> the name can be for a man or a woman. But Serena's housemate was the first thing that was in my head. And I was like, it's obviously a Sheila. But uh, there you go. It was not a Sheila. The surname was uh, prophetic. There you go. Um, I don't know. I, for the most part, I don't think I've seen anything insane emailing or anything like that. 
Most mm. of them that happen for my end is I just forget to attach what I need. Like uh, they're like, yeah. "Oh, send this over," and I'm like, "Okay, here you go." And then they're like, "Where's the attachment?" <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, oh yes, <laughs> let me send you another email with the attachment. Get it? How strange! I definitely. Oh, that. I feel like I did that one time sending you one of the episodes. I sent you the th- the email, and you were like, "Where's the episode?" That's <laughs> correct. And I'm like, oh, I wasn't seeing you. But I was... <laughs> Most of the time, you did it correctly. Credit yeah, works the time. No, ninety. 95%, yeah. <laughs> All right, if each if if each of us were a character in a mockumentary, what would our exag- exaggerated workplace personas be like? Oh, I think you know, I'd kind of like to go uh, well use like the office as an example. Mm-hmm. On one hand, I think maybe I would kind of like to say Michael Scott because he's obviously the first person everyone thinks of, but I actually think I would be like Jim Halpert because I just don't care. You know the way, like he, John Krasinski. Okay, he's great, mm. but he doesn't actually act in the office. He just sits in his chair and looks at the camera. Yeah, that is the definition of me at work. I just sit there. Teacher, difficult. Explain. I'll explain in ninety minutes after the break. Work with your partner for now. I just put the answer key in the projection. That is me. I just have lost all drive, all interest, all care. <laughs> this ship has just run dry. What about you? Um, I would be like the new guy that just got hired at this place, and so my character <laughs> would just just be the new guy, and so he like the photocopier. He's like has absolutely no idea how to do anything. Has no idea that you could like microwave stuff or you could do any of that. All that he's just doing is just like trying to figure everything out as quickly as possible. And then sometimes using the kettle to try to make a cup of coffee. <laughs> ask the most simplest questions, and everyone's just like, "Why is he asking this question?" Like he should, mm-hmm. but he doesn't know because he's not been here. <laughs> That's where we're at. <laughs> That's fair. That's fair. Uh, all right. If you could introduce uh, the funniest blooper award um, on our podcast, wh- who would be the reigning champion? Who would be the funniest? Who would have made the funniest blooper? Oh. I'll let you think about it because I have my answer. It's me. Because for the YouTube ones... I actually think I may have done us a disservice because I used to actually cut out all of those because I kind of thought, oh no, that looks unprofessional. Whereas nowadays I would just leave them in because I just assume people would laugh. Yeah. Um, so I suppose I went in such a rampage deleting them back then. I don't even know which funny ones we've left in. Because like I said, I, I don't even rewatch these. Yeah. <laughs> Not to dissuade or discourage any of our audience. from doesn't care. <laughs> You give me your answer, and I'll see if it jogs my memory. Um, so I think it's me because literally the first ever episode, I completely mispronounced your name, and was oh, yeah. like, I went. Probably. It was strong and wrong. Like I was strong. <laughs> I was winning it, and I was like, "This is it." And the whole Brandon. time, all I see on my screen because normally right now I can see your full name, and so I would you know at least give it a better attempt back then it was just your first name and so i was like it's brendan merriment <laughs> i just went strong into it the whole time <laughs> thinking that was it because i had no way of seeing what it actually was and I yeah. think even yeah. on your even on like um your character profile it has it but like it's brendan like the first part so the all of my interaction with you was just it was brendan so it's like, you know, brendan i yeah. never Tied the two together, and it was, it was, yeah, it was a rough moment right off the bat. <laughs> you know what? I actually do think that is the answer because of all the mistakes you ever made, all the bloopers, that is the one we've definitely cited the most, mm-hmm. even yeah. on the even on the channel. So, yeah, that, that, that is the answer. Yeah, yeah. Um, 
Yeah, it's about to All right. Share a story about a colleague or your student's most memorable excuse for being late or not turning something in. I've literally had students tell me that dogs had eaten their homework. I had one this week! <laughs> I was like, okay. <laughs> You're an adult. If you don't do it, what am I going to do? Yeah. You ran on the tail and spank you? I'm like, do I look like I care? <laughs> do it, don't do it, see if I care. I just have to put something in the last one log. <laughs> I'm not going to you, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> well, see, here's here's the difference. You don't have to deal with angry parents because they're just adults. Like you, they should know better, and it's up to them. No, I have to deal with parents who might go. Why is this guy a zero? Mm -hmm. Yeah, <laughs> this is fear that's just hanging over me. <laughs> yeah, that's right. That could drop any moment. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The dog eating the homework. That's just. <laughs> Yeah, I literally... I'm pretty sure you can't have pets in your accommodation with 12 other Brazilians. Hello. Yeah. What? <laughs> oh, brother. Uh, all right, I'm going to skip one here. Uh, if you... You want to skip the juiciest ones. I need to know which one you're skipping. Hang on. Okay. Uh, all right, let's let's try... We'll just, we'll just keep going. We got time. Let's do them all. If you could create a new office holiday, what would it be called and how would it be celebrated? Oh, that wasn't all that interesting. New office holiday. Oh. So just a new day off of work. Or not. I think I would call it the first uh, the first day off. It's a long title. Hmm. The first day off in our new tradition of having one day off every month. It's a long title. It's a work in time. I might edit it later on. But when you establish that there is a first day off and that there will be a day off every single month, well, one has to assume it will be seen through. So therefore, you're not only getting one day off, you are actually rigging it so that you get 12 days off. The first monthly day off. <laughs> that is... <laughs> yep. I told you it could do it some editing. <laughs> Um, I think it'd be fun to have a uh, a certain person appreciation day. So, like a Logan appreciation day, a Brendan appreciation day. Where and who do I care about after the two of us? What was that? I would appreciate myself. I would even stretch myself to appreciate you. After that, who do I want to celebrate? Exactly. I think, <laughs> I think it'd be just it's optional. Just optional. Is it's attendance mandatory? <laughs> you pick one person, and that's the only appreciation day that you get. So, if it's the person who you just has has a uh, a character that they are very like, you know, some people might say they're egotistical. That they're the people who you appreciate that day. That's not happened. <laughs> well, I said, let your man be a liar. I say, lash me not be. Wow, worth a shot. <laughs> um, I do not abide. If your work email had an off out of office reply that was completely honest, what would it say? I don't, <laughs> don't care. Stop reading these. I don't read them. They go in my Google bin. <laughs> One day my boss actually came up to me and she was like, Brandon, did you get the email I sent? Nope. She was like, I sent it five minutes ago. Just open your email there. So I went my email. I was like, see, it hasn't come through. How strange. So she took at her phone and she opened up her sent messages and she's like, see, but it definitely sent. And I was like, you know, sometimes there is a lag. Sometimes there is a delay. And then when she walked away, I opened up my bin and I moved it back into my inbox. <laughs> I didn't want her to know I automatically deleted it. <laughs> oh boy. I just don't care. <laughs> I don't care. Sue me. <laughs> I've been in the workforce too long. My my my, 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 my emotional range is just has been, it's been drained. It's gone. Yeah. What I about you? Mine would be something like um if it if this is outside of office hours, 
or this is on a weekend, you're not going to hear anything. <laughs> <laughs> just give like, the, the triangular like brackets and just be like, you know, insert head shake. <laughs> nope. <laughs> not something. <laughs> All right. What workplace rule would you imp implement if you were in charge for a day? Uh, let me see. Sometimes people talk about absolutely obscene stuff at work, but I don't know. I, I, when I'm not at work, I'm quite a big champion of free speech, so I don't know if I'd really impose like a keep certain topics off the table at work necessarily. Um, I would change the work hours. We have a 75 minute lunch break. I see absolutely no reason why it should be 75 and not 60. Um, because if it's 75 minutes, then I can, uh, the first bus I could properly get would be half an hour later. Um, if we finished 15 minutes earlier, we would finish at 4.30 and I'd be able to get a bus 20 minutes from then and arrive home an hour earlier. So I would change the days. I've already said it to management. I've said it. And they're like, that's not happening. But I threw it out there. I thought it was a class idea. It's worth a shot. Uh, I'm going to go something like, well, if I have one day, I'm going to change it so that I am the manager. So that <laughs> I'm in charge the rest of the way. <laughs> Still need the job. You still care. You still have all that energy and zeal. I know. I know. Yeah. No. I. Uh, mine would just. Mine would probably be something along the lines of I would just send everyone home. I just say, oh, Ooh, everybody can go home for the day. Amazing. Go home early. Have a nice day. Or how about don't come in tomorrow? Because <laughs> if they've already come in, they've already spent time public transport. And I have to spend t more time going home. Yeah. Why not honor the time commitment by giving them the next day off? That's fair. That's fair. All right. Last question. What is the funniest work-related dream or nightmare that you've ever had? Ooh. Funniest. I once had a dream that I was like just sitting on the toilet grading test papers. <laughs> Probably because the test papers were then going to be flushed down the toilet because they were crap. <laughs> I woke up and thought that one was a bit mad. <laughs> yeah, I, I, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I think mine is. It has to do with. Like, I have this recurring nightmare that just keeps happening. Mm. So, my first job was I worked at a grocery store. Mm. Yeah. And um, we would always close at certain times. And one of the most terrifying things or frustrating things was when people would come in after we'd closed and they would say, well, I just need one more thing. And they would just, like, try and push, the, push their way in the door, go through the door. And so I have this recurring nightmare, even when I have not worked at this store for probably four or five years now, I just have this recurring nightmare. It usually happens when I need to get up early or I'm stressed about something going on in my life. And I just have this nightmare where I'm back at the store. I'm closing the doors. I have to go out and get the carts and bring them in. And every time I go out and get carts, somebody sneaks in the store every single time. And there's like hundreds of carts outside and I'm just trying to get all the carts in so that I can go home and I can't get all the carts in. And it's just, it just keeps going and it's, it's miserable. <laughs> Ouch. <laughs> Easier to you that dream in Jesus name. Yeah. It's not, I mean, one of the not a, not a restful sleep when that happens. You know, like get behind me, Satan. <laughs> oh man. Yeah. Oh. Well, anyway, if you have your work-related answers, we'd love to hear them. You can send them to from Dublin to Cleveland at gmail.com. And, of course, you can always get a hold of us um, at Bananaman17 and Brendan Thomas Merritt on Instagram. All right, Brendan, turn it over to you. From Where, where are you bringing to us from the Word of God? What are you bringing to us? And uh, what, what can the people learn from what we're sharing today? So go ahead, Brendan, take it away. Sure. 
So originally, friends, we're going to look at Song of Songs 4-2. Your teeth are like a flock of sheep just shorn, coming up from the washing. Each has its twin. Not one of them is alone. But Logan thought that was too risque and inappropriate. So therefore, we're going to turn back a page and instead look at Song <laughs> <laughs> Ignore that face he just pulled. I don't tell lies. <laughs> it is. Instead, we're going to look at Song of Songs 2, 14. My dove in the clefts of the rock, in the hiding places on the mountainside. Show me your face. Let me hear your voice. For your voice is sweet and your face is lovely. Song of Songs is a beautiful book between a husband and his wife, but it's also between um, Jesus um, and basically enticing the nation of Israel um, in, in context to his love. And the wonderful thing that I like there is the reference to a dove, because doves are birds that mate for life. When one dove chooses its mate, its partner, its whole life long it keeps an eye on that mate. It doesn't, it's not like a little randy scallywag like dolphins. I once saw dolphins winning adultery on the nature show. That wasn't very, very nice. It's not that way with doves. With a dove, there's that commitment. One might say a covenant. Um, you know, it picks one chooses one, loves one, doesn't let them go. And I think that's a really, really beautiful, intentionally chosen picture by Jesus. Yes, for Israel in that context, but also for us as his body. When he sets his sights on you, and the eyes of the Lord roam around the world looking for the righteous, he looks at you, he sees you, he loves you, he adores you, he sings songs of love over you, He's devoted to you. You're like a diadem in his hand, like a piece of gold that he traded himself for to buy. You're a treasure in his eyes. He loves you completely, even if you're in the crags, even if you're in a rocky season, on a rocky mountain, in inhospitable terrain and harsh environments. His eye is always on you, and he's always, ever working things together for your good. Amen. Yeah, man. Well, well, all I can say is it's a good thing we're not Jewish, because if we were Jewish, we would not have been able to read what we just read. <laughs> if you were married, you couldn't read it. <laughs> it's too inappropriate. <laughs> oh, well. Anyway, thank you, Brendan, for sharing and reminding us of God's love and how much he loves us, because he does. Um, and it's just a picture of that. And, um, yeah, he loves us so much. And it's we don't always fully understand it. We don't always fully see it all the time because we think that maybe he's far away. But he's always with us. He does love us. He's If you just think back to all the times and things that he's done for you specifically— Mm. And the things he's done for pe his people and the things that he's loved for each and every one of them. We, we, could, we would drain the ocean dry if we tried to count every single drop. We, would, we wouldn't, like all of the ocean would not be able to fill it up if we counted all of the blessings and all the things he's done for us. So he loves you. Love him with all your heart. Love him with all your life. Sacrifice those things that are wrong or sinful or holding you back from fully loving him as you should. So do that today. Spend time doing that. Um, Brandon, would you pray us out as we head on for the rest of our week? Amen. Father God, I thank you for your love. I thank you that you are love and that we are recipients of your love. On Mary's good grace, favor we don't deserve, that we could never work for, never win, never earn, never attain by human attempts. But it's a free gift. When you give freely, one that you delight in giving, and one that you best demonstrated by the finished work of the cross of Jesus, the blood you poured out to wash us clean. 
and the empty grave and the fresh life that you walked out in from that grave that you now give to us and our spirits, our souls and ultimately our bodies. We thank you for your love. We thank you that you see us as worthy of that love. And if anyone under the sound of my voice is struggling in that area, they don't think they're worthy of your love. Because of anything they've thought, said or done, or anything that they've heard. From demons, humans, social media bots, whatever it is. Jesus, pour your liquid love out in those people. Give them a fresh understanding of the absolute goodness of God, your incomparable love, and the reality that as numerous as the sand is on the seashore, so numerous are your thoughts for us. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, and amen. Amen, amen. Well, next time, friends, you will hear of Brendan's adventures and how all that goes on. But as this episode's going out, he's probably on his way and he's traveling. So be praying for him as he travels. Amen. Um, and he will need it. And God's going to do some awesome things. So be praying that God will do those awesome things and Brendan will have good opportunities. Um, and that the devil or the demons won't get in his way. That he'll be able to succeed through his through the Lord and through his spirit. Um, so be praying for him. We will see you all next time. Thank you so much for listening. Goodbye, friends. Ciao. Slow nuts.